If you are looking to get into HMO mortgages, watch this video. Hi, it's Pam here from Niche Advice. Right, the biggest, by a mile, the biggest questions that I get always on a weekly basis is, um, I want to be a property, you know, I want to invest in property. Normally get a guy, phone me up, say, I want to invest in property, um, and I want it to be a HMO. And, and I'll say, okay. And my first question is, okay, well, how many properties do you own? Nothing. So, well, okay, well, fine. Um, so then I know that I need to have a certain conversation with this person. And to be honest with you, frankly, I'm now going to do this video and I'm going to send them this video every time I get the call because I thought I will try to answer a lot of the questions that I'm getting from people that are looking to get into buy to let or property investments, but specifically targeted at like HMOs. I have done a video and I will leave it here um, and it's to do with first time landlords, first time buy to let. So I'll leave the, the link up there. Go and watch that. That's about just normal buy to lets. Okay. This is around HMOs and getting into HMO properties. Now, obviously, I'm on YouTube and there are lots of other YouTube videos out there from lots of people with their own different agendas. One of the agendas out there is to get um, uh, relatively inexperienced people to invest in property. First of all, to invest in courses and training and bits and pieces, but also then to take that knowledge and go and invest into um, property. Um, a UK property, generally um, cheaper properties, and then you, you, you buy them, you convert them into a HMO, uh, they call it adding value, you add value to the property, uh, and then you, you look to pull your money out by refinancing. I've seen this trend of videos around YouTube, you know, uh, oh yeah, I had no money, you know, I bought a property for 60K, uh, and you know what, it's now rented for two and a half thousand pounds a month, I've done so well, I'm gonna be a property millionaire, I'm gonna replicate that, and that's how I'm gonna make my, my living. Um, so, and unfortunately, I don't know, and I'm not criticizing the people that are doing the training, obviously, they're making a living, they're, they're, giving, they're giving out some advice out there. What I would say is probably the people that are not taking the training, and then, uh, and then phoning someone like me up and saying, look, you know, what? Well, that's what I want to do. I've, I've seen lots of videos. So um, let's go through some of the um, some of the common um, problems um, that I, I come across. Uh, and, and some of the bits maybe you're not being told on, on the YouTube videos. OK, point one, you need to have experience to be a HMO landlord. OK, now uh, what I mean by that is majority. Well, I would say pretty much every lender. And at the moment, as I speak, all lenders, but you know, let's just assume that we're gonna go with criteria before COVID. Um, you need to have at least a year or two's experience as a buy to let landlord, okay? For a majority of the lenders to give you a HMO mortgage. They don't tell you that in the property millionaire courses, do they, right at the beginning? They don't say, oh, actually, um, you need to have a year or two experience to be a HMO landlord, okay? Now, there was a lender, and I will name him Kent, Lo Kent Reliance, Kent Reliance used to give um, HMO mortgages or used to offer HMO mortgages to inexperienced landlords. What I meant by that, but you had to be a homeowner, okay? So you had to be a homeowner. Um, and then they would look to give you a HMO mortgage, okay? Now, they've stopped doing that, funny enough. They're only doing remortgages at the moment. They've They've, they're part of the One Savings Group, which also Precise Mortgages are part of, uh, and they're, they're, they've taken a more cautious approach to HMO landlords, okay? So, but everyone else that I know of, you need to have some experience, whether a year, whether it's two. Now that could be specific HMO experience or generally buy-to-let experience, okay? They would want one or two years buy-to-let experience. So all of those people that do not own any properties, and want to buy a HMO and convert it and do, 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 you can't get a buy to let mortgage or HMO mortgage, sorry. Now, how people were doing these in the past, so how do they get around it? They get around it by doing bridging finance, okay? Now, I will also, I've done videos on bridging finance and some of the truths and some of the dangers around bridging finance and using bridging finance when you're inexperienced and you don't know what you're doing. That's vital, okay? So watch that video as well. I've put it on the channel, but in simple terms bridging finance is is not to be messed around with you know it is 
it is a, a facility used by professionals to buy renovate you know and, and flip properties okay you could use it as a first time landlord and yes you're not going to get the best rates because you've got no experience you've got to probably have a lot more money behind you so deposit wise so the the, the issue is is not that you cannot get into property if you don't uh, you know if you don't own anything you can you can use bridging finance you can use facilities out there but the problem is it's high risk and you can't do it with five pound in the back of your pocket okay you need to have some money you need to have something behind you okay you can't blag it okay basically right and the problem is the people that are phoning me regularly haven't got that they haven't got a property they haven't necessarily got a a, a job a with a high paying job that's going to you know support them and then more importantly they don't have the big deposit so the conversation is i want to get into property i don't own anything i don't have a big deposit and i don't have a big job to back things up with if things go wrong okay now that's someone i can't see i mean I, someone needs to be out there to tell you these people that that's not that's not the way to go okay especially in this market okay because in this market, one, you need to know what you're doing. Two, you need to have some money behind you, okay? Because things go wrong, okay? Three, especially if you're doing bridging finance, development finance, things like that, because things do go wrong, okay? Um, so um, if you've got some money behind you, you've got some vitalettes maybe, you own a residential property, there are, there are options and there are ways we can get you HMO mortgages. But if you just want to get into it like that, it's going to be very, very, very difficult. Now, there are all sorts of different types of HMO mortgages you can get. And let's go to it. Let's just assume that you can get a mortgage. Um, there are mortgages where, you know, you're converting your property. So at the moment, it's just a normal three bed semi and you're going to kind of convert it into three or four bed. Um, and you've got to put your planning permission in. There are lenders that will say, OK, if you've applied for the HMO license, um, we can give you a mortgage in principle with that obviously on exchange and completion you've got to show us evidence that you've got the, the certification and documentation um, so uh, and all and obviously things need to you need to give some thought in how you buy that property is it going to be in a limited company is it going to be in your own name get tax advice before you speak to someone like me you need to know where you stand so that's a very important question then you just need to look at what type of HMO are you buying a uh, couple of other things to watch out for lenders do not like HMO flats generally okay so uh, uh, you know take that in mind you know I remember a few years ago I was trying to do a HMO flat refinance for a client of mine which was above a cafe absolute nightmare so if it's a HMO flat if what's underneath it will have a massive impact on who's going to lend okay um, so it's not just about the property itself if it's a flat what's either side of it what's underneath it what's the access rights so that's important another thing that people get caught on on, on the hmo stuff is um you know m minimum room sizes you need to be reading um reading the various regulations around that you know just because you're buying a three bed semi what happens to that box room so forth what you're going to do so uh, and i think what you will find within the market um, as everybody's getting into it you know because of these courses and um, uh, a lot of the online things out there everyone's looking to get into oh i'm going to make a lot of money and so the market's becoming saturated sure there are lots of um, there are uh, cheaper properties up north um, and you can make some good gains and don't get me wrong there is good money I mean I've got I've got landlords that are making really really good money out of HMO but you've just got to do it the right way maybe get into a buy to let maybe buy the first buy to let maybe a small buy to let investment firstly and then move move it along maybe get a small HMO uh, you know I've, I've got people that are asking me questions about oh yeah can you can you get me um you know I want to buy a three bed uh, semi turn it into a four bed semi or five bed semi and can you do it on uh, instead of break, um, bricks some mortar can you do it on a commercial basis well it's a it's essentially a four bed semi no i can't you know commercial basis is when you get valuation on a commercial basis they're generally for larger hmos you know 10 15 20 bedrooms or 20 rooms you know that's a commercial entity not a three bed semi with all due respect with one one you know one property you've got 
all sorts of things to think about. You know, this, the strategies that they're teaching you around buy it, take your money out, buy it, refinance, redevelop, take your money out. What happens when you've got stress testing behind the scenes? You know, lenders have got stress testing now. They want to make sure your portfolio is performing very, very well. So, you know, um, and, and also, you know, you've got uh, uh, lenders are being a lot more cautious around clients. OK, I'll give you an example. Uh, one of the lenders that I'm dealing with, I put in a case through with them uh, about two, two weeks ago. OK, it fitted their criteria word for word. I honestly, I must have spoken to them about five times before I sent the case through. OK, the case went to the underwriters and the underwriters said, mm, we don't like it. I said, well, what could it be? It fits your criteria, it fits this, it fits that, it fits that. They just said, you know what, well, we're not comfortable with it. That's because there's only a certain amount of lenders that are lending a high loan to values right now. So they're cherry picking, they're cherry picking, okay? So they will cherry pick, okay? If you were a lender, would you lend to someone who's got one HMO, no job, no deposit, highly skilled? Or would you lend to someone who's got six or seven of these HMOs, track record, here's their tax returns, they've made X amount of money. So you've just got to think, okay, what happens if I take that bridging finance and I can't refinance? I'll give you an example. People that took bridging finance six months ago, before coronavirus, before the world went mad, and now they've taken a six month deal and they're, they're, they're trying to get out. Okay. Well, there's a lot less lenders out there within the buy to let sector okay so a lot of those lenders the vida home loans um a lot of the other lenders that are, that were around they're not around anymore they're not lending anymore sure in the last week or two we have seen a lot more lenders to come back in but the, the, the criteria is a lot more cautious okay they were a lot more cautious around it just because lenders are coming back saying they're lending the products are completely you know some of them are they're, they're, they're tolerance for example to adverse the loan to values They've all come down, okay? So if you thought your loan to value, you were gonna refinance and you're gonna get a good loan to value deal, mm, I don't think loan to values are gonna come up as much. Um, uh, and I think loan to values and valuations are gonna be under pressure, especially on the refinancing, okay? Where you get a lot of the problems around valuations is not on uh, purchases, you do get them on purchases, but it's refinancing. So if you're on bridging finance and your valuations are not coming up, they're not stacking up, what are you gonna do? You'll have to put more money in or you'll have to put it up for sale. So yeah, so just hopefully you found this useful. Please do like and subscribe. I am trying to give you some more you know, practical uh, advice here. I deal with this day in, day out. I speak to clients day in, day out. This is not a theory board behind me. You know, I speak to people that are trying to do these transactions and I am doing these transactions on a daily basis. So I'm trying to give you that information um, to hopefully make it your, worth your while. Please like and subscribe and share this channel. I'm trying to get grow this channel so you actually get some factual information out there uh, rather than sort of, you know, you're gonna, be a, you're gonna be a millionaire and this is how you do it and, and via a very risky, uh, risky way. Um, thank you so much, all the best.